Welcome back. They say true love doesn't cost a thing, except maybe on Valentine's Day. New data shows more than half of Canadians are planning to take a special someone out to dinner tonight, even as rising prices and economic factors are reportedly weighing heavy on their minds. Emily Taylor joins us live in studio to break down all the costs associated with the most romantic holiday of the year. Emily? Yeah, look, Louie, no one likes to talk money at a romantic dinner, but a financial planner that I spoke with earlier today suggests it might actually not be such a bad time to bring up the conversation, especially given how expensive it's gotten to go out to restaurants. While love may not cost a thing, a majority of Canadians will be showing their affection by spending some cash this Valentine's Day. To my favorite Valentine, me. Pour moi. <gasps> According to a new survey from the Retail Council of Canada, 83% of those celebrating say they'll spend the same amount of money or more that they did last year. That's even though 40% of couples say the rising cost of living is weighing heavy on them. We look at food away from home. That is up more than other cost categories. And so is candy. Price of sugar uh, has really been up all around the globe. It's a similar story in the United States. Consumers are expecting to spend around $25.8 billion this year, which is on par with last year and the third highest we've seen in our survey's history. In fact, the average person is expected to spend around $185 on this day of love. Flowers, diamonds, three-course meal, violinist comes to my table to serenade me. Food, alcohol, candy, and restaurants are the top spending category, with one survey suggesting at least half of couples plan on going out for dinner. The Retail Council calls this funflation, where people save money throughout the year in order to treat themselves during the holidays. But hopefully you made that reservation in advance. My perfect Valentine's Day? I'm at home. Three cell phones in front of me, fielding desperate calls from people who want to buy one of the 50 restaurant reservations I made over six months ago. But money isn't going as far as it used to. While retailers are seeing the usual boost in sales this time of year, many florists and candy shops are seeing smaller purchases being made, like smaller bouquets rather than a dozen roses. And financial planners say that while tough talks about money don't seem romantic, it's not a bad idea to bring it up at the dinner table tonight. Valentine's Day dinner might not be the place where you think it would be the logical place to talk about sex, money, death, uh, all of these tough topics. But, you know, Valentine's Day is a, a chance to reflect on your relationship and to say, you know, obviously we have a lot of fun together, but are we set up for the future? Despite tough economic times for Canadians, Wilfil says one in 10 haven't talked to their partner about finances and one third haven't discussed end of life planning. I think the, the best way to approach it, at least in my own relationship, has been in the context of our larger goals, you know, and whether it's estate planning, whether it's finances, it's really asking, what do we want our legacy to be? What do we want to build together in our lives? And then you can get into the brass tacks like budgeting. Happy Valentine's Day, Charlie Brown. And Valentine's Day, of course, is not just for couples. 14% of people say they are planning to spend this with friends, and 11% say they're expecting to spend their Valentine's Day treating themselves. 